Welcome uh, at Masi uh, in the Veneto region, northeast of uh, Italy, where the Boscaini family, my family, produces uh, uh, stunning wine from this land, typically of this region, since uh, 1772. Actually, in this moment, we are in uh, one of these drying loft. Uh, actually, in uh, our um, estate and in this region, has been developed this expertise in drying the grapes before to make them wine. So drying the grapes is a very long process that uh, uh, has been initiated back uh, at the Roman time, so over 2,000 years ago, in order to achieve more concentration and more personality to the wine from the local grapes variety. This drying comes in a natural way, just uh, gently um, putting the, the full bunches uh, perfectly ripe uh, during the season uh, in uh, September, October, on these bamboo trays. Uh, this grape uh, lies here for three to four months, losing between uh, 35 to 40 percent of the original weight. In this way, all the juices, all the contents of the, of the berries get uh, concentrated. Uh, leaving some water out and everything gets concentration and moreover we have uh, some transformation of aromatics of uh, of course intensity of acidity, sugars level um, and even uh, color uh, composites inside the berries. Uh, this uh, juice that comes out of the crushing of these uh, dried grapes uh, is more thick, is more uh, dense, giving much more big wine. This is the way that we do the world's famous Amarone. Uh, just to know, it's important to know that uh, at Masi we developed this technique of drying the grapes in many other original interpretation. Of course we are producing Amarone, actually we are the leader in the production of Amarone, having five different um, Amarones, but even uh, we master this expertise in uh, winemaking with dried grapes, as I said, uh, adding other products that take advantage of the technique, but in different ways, with blend and with double ferment fermentation wine. Uh, important to know even the tradition that uh, still in use of using this uh, bamboo rack for doing the drying. Uh, actually, is the most efficient way to have the grapes dried and avoiding any kind of disease, mold, mosquitoes or all the other elements. You know how delicate as a fruit is a grape, having this berry very delicate, but in this uh, bamboo tray is the ideal condition. Uh, through each cane of bamboo the air can go through uh, and the, the, the grape is like is uh, suspended on the air basically. Can air everywhere, on top, on the bottom, on the side, and so the process of drying can be uh, perfectly done. Of course it's a natural process, but in some condition we can have some problem. Some autumn are too much wet, we have uh, too much humidity, sometimes we have uh, some fog or rainy days for weeks, and this is uh, too bad for our grapes that eventually doesn't dry, but eventually get uh, mold and diseases and so on. So we keep this uh, room with uh, some uh, uh, instrument uh, that uh, just in case can help the natural environment. So how it works? If the conditions outside of this uh, room are the ideal one, so dry, ventilated and, uh, and possibly sunny during the autumn, so nothing happened. All the windows and the openings are open automatically and the nature can do the work of drying the grapes. If eventually, as I said, we have a bad season with a lot of rain and so on, some sensor feel that the humidity amount is too high and um, automatically close all the windows and doors. Uh, therefore, uh, the, the environment is insulated from outside and can start some dehumidification with the system, with the, with the climatization system. So, uh, once again, we have the help of the state-of-the-art technology when needs. Not, it's not a forced drying, 
but when the nature is not uh, friendly with us, we substitute it with technology. Yes, sometimes they are separate, the grapes. Some other times are all together. Depends on the vineyard where we source the grapes. Uh, but more or less the time of drying is exactly the same for the three varieties and so on. The only one, yeah, I almost forgot. One very interesting thing about uh, this drying of the grapes, and specifically is one of the three varieties, Colvina, which actually in the blend of the Amalone is the one that uh, usually is around 70-75%, so the most important grapes into the Amalone blend. Colvina, uh, nearly at the end of the, um, of the drying process, gets infected with the uh, a fungus, the botrytis, the same of uh, Sutern, uh, is, let's say, a secret of the Amazone. Why a secret? Because it's not visible. If you see cluster, you cannot see, oh, this is infected or not, unless you don't lift your bunch through the light and you see some berries that are almost transparent. Those are the ones infected with the botrytis. So what is important in botrytis? That botrytis generates into the berries glycerin, and the glycerin is the why Amalone is so drinkable, even if it's 15.5 alcohol, if it's even very high in dry extract, it's a big wine, but always gentle and smooth, due to this quantity of glycerin that is inside the wine. Good. Good. So uh, now we are in the Masi's experimental cellar. Uh, here, the Masi Technical Group, uh, this group of experts in winemaking, uh, vine growing, uh, marketing, and all, let's say, the discipline that are behind the label, uh, have the opportunity to test uh, all the different uh, varieties, the different technique in this state-of-the-art uh, cellar of vinification. All of this uh, tank, these uh, uh, eight tanks, has got uh, equipped with different uh, system in order to make the best uh, fermentation. So we can either taste the same grape variety in eight different uh, uh, way of uh, uh, vinified, or either test different uh, varieties in the same way to see the differences, the, the future of uh, our local uh, enology. Uh, this uh, cellar uh, is uh, always uh, busy during the season, of course, uh, uh, we are collaborating with several universities, including, of course, the local Verona, but Milan, Udine, uh, Bordeaux, and, and uh, some more uh, around the world, where every uh, season we have uh, uh, between five and ten students that uh, are doing their experiment, they master uh, everything around our viticulture. And for us, is really precious uh, elements in order to be always updated and be at the forefront of the innovation in winemaking in the Venetian area. So, uh, of course, uh, the lifetime of the wine, some of the time of the wine when it is uh, uh, built, it, is, uh, is time in the wood. Uh, in this part of the experimental cellar, we test the different uh, uh, wood, the different uh, size of barrels, and uh, why not, even the different uh, shape, which is quite unique uh, a possibility to see this uh, square barrel. Of course, very uh, convenient in terms of uh, logistics of to, to stack and so on, no, no waste of space. Uh, nevertheless, not really the ideal for the wine, but we are testing, the, the producer asked us to test this barrel, so we are pleased to do that, we are here for there. Uh, then we have, uh, choice of different uh, wood. Uh, here we have a lower, but we have a chestnut, we have a cherry, we have acacia, in order to uh, see what is better for the single variety, for the single wine, and for how much time. So the most variable things that we can have in choosing a wood are here tested, and then we can make the decision for the large production. So after all the experimentation, all the studies that, uh, once again, I remember, we can make just in a season, so once a year. We don't have many chances. Uh, so once a year we have these uh, results 
uh, result for us means uh, wines that we bottle, of course, in small uh, batches just to have uh, the memory of what we did. For example, here we have a 2002 Merlot that has been not uh, um, uh, watered, so has been just grown without having any kind of uh, irrigation. Uh, in 2002, down in Argentina, where we have our estate. Uh, these uh, are the witness of the of the experimentation we did, and from time to time, with the technical group, we can taste and check how the wine is developing according with the experiment we, we did in the past. Uh, ah, Eureka moment, all right, well, Eureka, yeah. Uh, I would say yes, when we basically, um, we basically discovered this ancient variety, or rediscovered this ancient variety, Oseleta. Uh, this is a, a very ancient grape that was uh, widely planted in, the, uh, in this area until uh, the beginning of uh, uh, last century, the beginning of uh, 1900, when uh, the phylloxera, this um, bugs, uh, kills basically all the vineyards in Europe. After that, the viticulture has been replanted everywhere, but not using anymore those varieties that were considered not good, both for the low yield or the bad quality. Well, some of them uh, has been uh, uh, replanted and, and some more interest came afterwards. Uh, this is the case of this Oseleta, a grape that my father uh, found it back uh, in the 70s at his uncle house, uh, uh, not very far from here. There was four plants of this variety and then uh, thanks to his curiosity, we now uh, are the most important producer of this variety, uh, which gives uh, really a specific personality and aroma to the Valpolicella wines. Having a very small um, um, bunch, very small berries, a lot of concentration, a lot of power to be added to the wine. One of our Amarone, for example, the Riselva Costa Sierra, has got a 10%. And this uh, strength of this variety give, a, I always say, a backbone to the wine, a very firm backbone. So is, this is an example of the uh, results of our studies that became uh, a regular production. Once again, in the Magic Technical Group uh, studies, of course, the, the studies start from, from, from scratch, so from the soil where we plant our vineyards. And it's interesting, those are the, um, the most interesting vineyard that we, we, where we grow grapes. From the single vineyard at Campolongo di Torbe, where you can see very dark soil, is actually the residual of uh, volcano activities. So um, volcanic soil, very rich in mineral, very dark. Then here we are more close to this area, Bayo Amalone, and you see is the stratification of uh, uh, both clay and uh, limestones and so on. So uh, once again, Mazzano. Again here, more volcanic soil. You see more dark, but a different uh, texture. So it's very interesting. And here we have the Lake Garda, where we have more sandy soil. Um, it's very interesting to see uh, where our vines can develop, can grow the roots are taking energy from the soil and uh, according where they are they can be more uh, rich in water minerals or other elements and so giving different results the same grape different soil different results of course the 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 fining and the maturation of the wine that comes in the barrel is very important in order to give it a more smooth and complex and pleasant product. But even the aging of the wine in the bottles, in our cellars, is very important. Um, following a tradition of the family, started by my grandfather Guido, uh, was to keep aside uh, around 10% of uh, every year's production of Amarone. In order to do what? to save this wine and to put it, it on the market uh, several decades after in order to have the chance to test uh, the second age of Amarone when it's really uh, mature and of course aged. Uh, this is a tradition that is quite expensive, you can imagine, you see 
thousands and thousands of bottles that are lying here for uh, 10, 15, 20 years. And then they will be released, a second release on the market for, to give verticals to our uh, passionate uh, consumers to restaurant that can put uh, a full vertical in their restaurant with wines that has been stored properly with the guarantee of Masi. So for us it's a very um, precious uh, uh, heritage and tradition to keep going. Uh, all this bottle has been of course uh, uh, bottled at the time of the bottling then some of them released in the market and those are stored here for more years. Uh, all the, the, bar, the bottles have been checked um, every year uh, to see the developing and eventually it's going to be recorked before to be uh, placed in the market. Uh, of course uh, not all the vintage of Amarone are actually deserve this kind of uh, treatment, this kind of care, uh, but when they are great they are really outstanding. The wine can last uh, for over 40 years uh, with a great intensity and a great emotion to the consumer. Uh, in front of me, for example, I have one of the really the best vintage of the last dec um, century, uh, 97. That was a great, great vintage when everything goes how it's supposed to go. <laughs> great uh, uh, sunshine, a nice uh, cool temperature during the um, uh, springtime. Uh, the flowering was great. During the summer you have a nice sun, but not too heavy, not to burn the, the grape uh, on, the, on the plants. And a perfect autumn, so the harvest and the time of drying. So that was really the ideal, um, the ideal season and the result is still here. Uh, 97 is the most celebrated vintage for the Amalone. Uh, this until few years ago, 2007 and 2006 were both great, great vintages. But this is more curious as well. There were great vintages at the same level, so five-star vintages, but for different reasons. Uh, if, if 96 was apparently quite a challenging season during the, the spring because of the lot of rain, this at the end helps a lot. So these rainfalls um, make some flower lose make uh, lose some flower. This leads the, the vine to delivery bunches with less berries. Less berry means very loose bunches with a lot of space between berries. Just the perfect bunches to go in the process of, of apacimento, where the air can go through and do the job, no disease at all. That was really great. This very nature provides the perfect bunch for the apacimento. The maturation in barrel is very important for Amarone and all the wines uh, with uh, uh, apacimento. Uh, actually, here at Masi, we have uh, a very uh, precise philosophy in the using of the uh, wood for aging. Of course, the wood is the one that interacts with the wine the most. The possibility to the air to go through the pore of the wood and uh, give uh, um, uh, oxygen to the wine, together with the, the texture and the flavors of the wood that integrates into the wine. Well, uh, this point is quite delicate for us. I always say to our technician to use the wood uh, for what he's supposed to do, to smooth the angles into the wines, uh, to make it more smooth and gentle. Uh, so uh, a balanced wine from Masi and Amarone Costa Sierra, for example, uh, can be very smooth and gentle. And in some way you don't perceive that has been stored for years in barrel. So you perceive for the, for the smoothness, for the gentleness of the wine, but not for the taste of the wood. So in uh, Valpolicella, in this region, the traditional way to age both Valpolicella and the Amarone are in this giant barrel, uh, always made in, in um, oak. And uh, actually, here the wine can really settle down very gently and slowly through the ears. So 
once again, the effect of the wood into the wine is basically not measurable, it's, it's nothing. But the breathing of the, of the, through the pore of the wine is very, very important. It's a very gentle uh, way to uh, improve your wine. It takes a lot of years. So with the Masi Award, Masi and the Masi Foundation celebrates all the, I mean, excellence of the Venetian area, of the culture of winemaking and the um, diplomacy and global peace. Uh, is a prize that has been uh, um, initiated 33 years uh, ago, uh, where the, um, the, the winner of this prize, uh, judged by a, a, a very prestigious jury, can uh, uh, enjoy a barrel of Amalone. So, in the 33 edition has been many uh, winners, uh, including, of course, in the, in the terms of wine. Uh, for example, last year, uh, the Institute of uh, Master of Wine from uh, uh, UK, but uh, many other producer, um, uh, writers, uh, or even entrepreneur in, in the wine world, but even in the, in the Venetian culture, the, um, I mean, uh, representation. So here, this uh, small and ancient cellar, we dedicate it to this uh, Oseleta grape. Uh, here is basically almost the opposite of the other wines we produce. Oseleta deserve a very hard treatment with wood. That's why here we use a new barrique, high toasted, because this grape, very generous in terms of uh, tannin structure and acidity, need to be, let's say, calmed down by the wood. So, in this uh, small cellar, we have uh, three vintages of uh, Oseleta that uh, get uh, treated with wood in order to, be, to become more smooth and gentle, but keeping its uh, strong and precise uh, distinctive character. This is the Cantina Privata Boscaini, where we collect uh, the best vintages uh, for, to be shared with friends uh, and uh, very, it's a very intimate uh, celebration of uh, wines that, uh, as I say, the tradition of my family, we start to keep aside these wines. Here we have uh, uh, nearly 100 years of uh, history of our region, of our enology, uh, in these uh, magnificent bottles that uh, saved here, you see, protected by this gate from uh, everyone else but the family. Costa Sierra Contemporary Art is a project that uh, involved, uh, of course, Masi and uh, the contemporary art. Uh, we start uh, last year in uh, Sweden uh, asking uh, Ernst Bilgren to create uh, a paint uh, inspired by our flagship wine, the Costa Sierra Amarone. Uh, the project is made uh, in this way, where the artist Ernst uh, produced these uh, paintings uh, called uh, Nature and Culture, uh, because he believes, uh, and is basically right, that uh, wine is something that put together, uh, of course, nature, the elements to make the wine, and the culture, the, the handcraftship, uh, the man uh, um, intelligence, uh, and the story behind uh, to make wine. And so, it is it say that uh, these uh, things become into a circle. Uh, actually, the circle that is uh, basically the shape of our characteristic label. So he interpretates this uh, wine and the label with this opera. So the project is not finished just that, to having uh, purchased uh, an opera from Ernst. But uh, we produce a limited edition of uh, Costa Sera in this uh, specific uh, label that really uh, have the opera of uh, Ernst. And with the revenues, uh, thanks to the uh, selling of this uh, um, limited uh, edition of uh, Costa Sera Contemporary Art, we were uh, able to um, finance a scholarship for who? For a young uh, artist from Sweden that uh, had the opportunity to come for a couple of weeks in Murano, 
learning the art of uh, blowing the, the glass. And uh, the, the, the contest uh, has been ended uh, a few weeks ago when uh, this student came back uh, from his experience in Milano delivering a piece of art over there. So in these uh, 20 years of uh, our uh, friendship with uh, uh, Sweden, I've been many, many times in, uh, in your land and it's a wonderful place. Uh, and I feel that uh, our wines really uh, get very well with your food, with your tradition, with your uh, weather as well. And uh, in this time, uh, I had a great experience in terms of uh, meeting people, meeting culture, having uh, nice uh, evenings in Stockholm and uh, everywhere around Sweden. So thanks for the loyalty with Mazi, the friendship that you show and the interest that you keep showing in our wise, in our family. Skål!